lavish, lavish, lavish. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. If you are a senior or a junior, you need to hear this. Whether you're in school or online, I'm pretty sure that this video can give you some tips so that you can be less stressed out during your senior year and junior year because you do not need to be stressed out. And I'm gonna tell you why you don't need to be stressed out. This video is going to help you get through your senior year and junior year and have a stress-free year so you can go on to college. So just keep watching if you wanna know some of the tips that I did um, during my junior and senior year. I'm making this video because during my senior year and junior year, I wish that I had a video to watch on YouTube that told me everything was gonna be okay. So here's me telling you everything is gonna be okay. Okay, so first I'm gonna start off with things that you can do jun during your junior year of high school that can help prepare you for your senior year and going into college. So one of my tips, well, a few of my tips would be for junior year is that you shouldn't be like focusing, you should focus on your senior year, but you should also still try and like do things that can prepare you for your senior year, but you don't have to be like too stressed about it because it's not like the senior year yet. So what I would say is that you should go to your guidance office or office in your school and get like the checklist that shows you what classes you need to take and how many credits you need to graduate and also get to know your counselor because you're going to need them like a lot during your senior year for recommendations sending in your transcript all that stuff so you need to be on good standing with your counselor and you also want to like get to know your counselor because that person will be the one to tell you if you're on track for graduation um so on and so so forth so another tip i would say and i'm also looking at some notes because i wrote down some notes um, another tip I would say is that you should try and at least do one AP course your junior year and then maybe more than two or even just one at least for junior and senior year. If you can do it before, um, ninth and 10th grade too, go ahead. But some schools I know don't let people do AP courses in ninth and 10th grade. So um, the reason why I say one AP course, and it should be one that's a common core subject like English, math, psychology, uh, history. Uh, the reason why I say this is because colleges will look at you taking that AP course and they'll see that like you're better in class academically than just taking like a regular honors class or a standard class. If you can take AP and honors, that's good too. But I say this because colleges look at this and they'll see that you're, you know, doing well in school and you're good academically, especially if you're passing the class. So there's a wide variety of like there's a wide variety of AP courses you can take that are like common core classes. Like don't take uh, a high gym in class because colleges don't really, you know, care about that. I mean, you can take that if you're majoring in something that has to do with like sports or whatnot. But you should also take something that's a common core thing like English stuff like that. So if you're not good at English, don't do AP English. If you're not good at math, don't do AP. Um, math do something that you're good at that you know that you'll be able to another thing about AP courses is that the grading scale if you get a B it's an A if you get a C it's a B so that also helps even though it's a little bit more um, challenging than standard but you will still have you know if you get a B it's an A in AP grading because of the credits so I think that that's a good thing that you can try and work and do um, another tip I would say is that you should try to take your PSAT and ACT your junior year just to like see how the test is, you know, just to like see how the test is and see your score so you know what to work on based off of that. You already know. Um, another thing I would say, I'm going to like say this now, um, this keys into junior and senior year, you should... Um, even with your score, if it's at the place that you want it to be, you should still take it again one more time. And you should keep taking your like your scores until it's like maybe at least the averages of um, you know, the American averages. I forgot I forgot in like the percentiles, but you should at least get like the average because um a lot of scholarships they give scholarships to people with those averages. 
So you should keep taking your SAT and ACTs, you know, just so you can like keep improving your scores and stuff. And you can also like see how you score. So when you take it your senior year for like the final times, you will, you know, do better than you did before because you've already worked your way around it. And also the scores can help you to get scholarships. And also do not, if you get a bad score or a, you know, a score that's not too good, take it again because scholar, like a school that you get accepted into might um, have a scholarship for a certain score and you could probably were like 20 points away. That's like saying like, always check the scholarships, like the grants that your school that you want to go to, your college that you want to go to has, like the, the score, um, the score that they would give the scholarship to because you could be 20 points away from it and you could get that scholarship so just always check on that type of stuff uh another thing i would say for your junior year and also senior year um is to join at least one club uh colleges look at this like to like show that you are involved and you were a good like citizen during your high school career so it looks good if you can't join a club, that's fine. You can do volunteering or you could even um, talk about uh, you having a job outside of school. That's also good too. Another thing during your junior year, you should be researching about colleges that you want to attend your senior year. Um, it just makes sense to know like, like to already start looking early into like what colleges you wanna do whether it's a four-year institution or a two-year place. Uh, community colleges are also a good way to like save money. If you are worried about like the money part and you don't get enough scholarship money, you can do community college. It is okay uh, for two years. They're cheaper, you can save money and then transfer to a four-year um, university. Uh, so whether it's that or um, either or, you should research about your college and also try and do campus visits because wherever you pick you're going to school, most likely you're probably gonna be there for like a while unless you transfer, but that usually takes a couple of, you know, times. So you should also like get familiar with your campus or place and see if you uh, like it or not. And you should also look at like what type of schools you wanna be at, a small school or a big school, you know, a large school, a school that has transportation, a small, you know, school that has nothing around it, a school that's in the middle of nowhere, a school that's in the city. You should look at all that stuff, you know, because when it's time to decide, you won't be thinking like, oh, what's, I don't know what school I want to go to, stuff like that. You can even watch YouTubers that vlog um, at the schools that you're looking at, you know, city school, stuff like that. Um, look at the how much the tuition for each school is, plus room and board, this type of scholarships they have, so you can see if you um, get a score to get those scholarships. Another thing you can do is to look into HBCUs, especially if you are someone who is African American or a person of color because they do give a lot of, you know, scholarships and like resources to that type of community. Um, you can you can pick any institution, but like you should also look into HBCUs too because they have different scholarships and um, they do take um, more people with lower uh, SAT and ACT scores. So another thing I would say is don't start off applying to schools and going into your senior year thinking like you're not gonna get into any school because that's what I was thinking too because you're so, you're so like, I mean, you know that you're gonna get accepted to one school or so, but you might not like, you might not think the school is a good school. But don't go into your senior year thinking like, you're not gonna get into any school because you will get into at least one school. You, like, you'll get into at least one school. Especially if you apply to HBCUs or um, community colleges, you'll get into at least one school. So don't go in thinking that you're not gonna get into any school. So I've already basically gone over like what my advice for like junior year would be. That's what I was saying. It's not too stressful for your junior year because you don't really have to like start doing you know your SAT and ACT stuff I didn't do my um SAT and ACT my junior year I only did my PSAT stuff 
so you don't have to but i'm just saying if i were to go back i would have done what this would have done differently i would have done my sat and act scores uh sooner you don't have to if you don't want to so that's what i'm saying you don't have to be stressed your junior year because it's not really stressful because you're not really doing anything really yet so those are what the things i would say for your junior is get to know your counselor check to see if you're on track for graduation with your credits apply to scholarships if you can because there's some scholarships for juniors um going into their senior year use utilize your summertime and apply to scholarships apply to scholarships because if you apply to 10 scholarships, you might not even get, you might not even win any of the 10. So you need to apply to more and more scholarships. If you apply to 20 scholarships, you can only win one out of the 20 that you apply because it's so competitive for scholarships. So that's what I'm saying, you should start off early. Utilize your summertime. You can at least apply, apply to one scholarship over the weekend during your like summer or two, and then you can enjoy yourself. It's not like applying to scholarships is going to take your fun away from, like, um, of enjoying yourself during the summer. Uh, try, another thing, try to maintain at least a, a high 3 point something. Not a 3.0, but at least a high, like a 3.5 and up or 4.0 your junior and senior year. Because colleges look at that. Don't worry if you didn't do well your 9th and 10th grade year, that is okay. It, all it matters is if you do a, um, uh, what is it, 180 and you like switch everything around your junior and senior year. Colleges understand that people like kids don't do too well their ninth and 10th grade year because it's like a big transition from middle school. You're still getting used to everything. So colleges understand that. But what you need to do is make the most of your junior and senior year. So at least try to get a 3.5 and a 4.0. So now this part of the video, I'm gonna get more into the senior things you should do. And if you think any of these things during your senior year are um, you know, something you can do during your junior year, don't let me stop you. Try and do them your junior year too. Like, just try them. But this is specifically what, like, what I did and what most people do during your senior year. But you can do some of these things during your junior year so you don't have to worry about them during your senior year. And if I'm repeating some stuff, um, it's because they're very important. So if I'm repeating, just don't mind me. Like, I'm probably going to repeat a few things your senior year. Something I would say is that after you know your junior year, you looked at the schools that you want to like go to. I would say that you should create a list of top reach and target schools. I'm going to explain what they are, but you can always look up what these mean. So your top schools are schools that you want to get into. If I've said anything wrong, please look it up or just correct it in the comments for other people to know but um your top schools are like all of the schools that um, you want to get into your reach schools are the schools that are um, based on your stats which are your SATs your cumulative GPA and your GPA um, the schools that you probably might not like your GPA your stats are not up there too much so you should be like here like look at that um your target schools are schools that you can get into based on your stats so once again stats are your gpas your community gpa which is your grade like your whole gpa of from your 9th 10th 11th and 12th grade so that's like your whole gpa please make sure that your community is at least a 3.0 but your gpas for each year are at least between a 3.5 and 4.0. If it's at least if it's a 3.0, that's okay. But strive for a 3.5 between a 4.0 for your GPA. Cumulative, a 3.0 at least. Your senior year is that you should already start making um, generalized essays for colleges. You can any college that you look that after creating this target, reach, and top school list, you can look from those schools that you put on your list what their essay questions are for um, incoming uh, freshmen or, you know, so that you can already start making generalized essays. Most schools, uh, unless it's like an IV or more um, competitive school, they try and change their essay questions a little bit, but most schools usually ask you to write a personal essay on anything, 
most of the time. So you can just write a personal essay on something that you've gone through, your experience with something, you know, how you started doing, you know, how you started playing guitar, how you started swimming, something that you're passionate about, personal essay, because most colleges already ask you that. So you can already start making that at the beginning of your senior year uh, because it's something so like simple. But um, other some schools, like if you want to get to an honors program, if you're going want to apply to a more competitive school, they do ask you more, like for more than one essay, or they might ask you like an essay question. But once again, you can always search up the essay questions and prepare your essays ahead. Another thing is that you can utilize your teachers. This is why I say AP. You should take AP English or AP teachers because AP teachers, um, they're, um, I don't want to say like better, but like. A my AP English teacher, she was very like good at looking at essays because she specializes in English. We write essays in English, so she specializes in that so she can critique it. But at the end of the day, just you don't have to be stressed out about your essays that you are writing. Most of the time, colleges really just look at your stats. The essay is just to see if you know how to like write and you're articulate. But other than that, like an essay someone could have like a very not the best essay and yours could be the very best but they have better stats than you most likely they will take that person the essay is not that big of a deal that you need to be stressed out on your essay still do good on your college um essay but after some time personally i just wrote my essays based on myself and i just got my older sibling to critique it also utilize your older siblings because if they went to college if they're in college or they went to college they went through the same thing so just utilize them you do not have to be stressed out about your college essay because colleges look at the essay but it's not like a key factor in deciding i know they say that all the time but trust me the college essays i've written some of them, I didn't even get anyone to check them, like some of them, but they were still good. But I'm just saying I didn't like get stressed to get teachers to look at them, stuff like that, because I've already taken AP English. So I know like how to write an essay. So I'm, that's why I'm telling you, like essays are not that big of a deal. Right on your FAFSA or FAFSA or however, however you pronounce it, they generally start October 1st. So right now, as this video is going up, you should have already been starting your FAFSA or done it already. You should get started on that because if you are looking for financial aid, to schools, when you finally apply late, there might not be uh, financial aid to give to you. Um, so you should look into that. Once again, apply to scholarships your senior year because now there are more scholarships. There's a wide um, a wide variety of scholarships for seniors to apply to. The types of websites that I use for scholarships were FastWeb and Scholarship.com. That is, those are the main places I use. I did not use any other places and I won scholarships from those two websites, FastWeb and Scholarship.com. Those are the ones I use. The key to do it to like winning scholarships is to apply to as many as you can. Because once again, if you apply to 20, you might only win one out of the 20 scholarships you apply to. Another key is to use key words. Like if you're left-handed, search for left scholarships for left-handed people. If you're a person of color, search for scholarships for minorities. If you are a military, a kid of a military person or veteran, search for scholarships there's a scholarship for at least there's a scholarship for everyone there's so many scholarships that you should not ha like have trouble finding which ones to apply to but it is very competitive because you're not the only one that is a senior in america or all over the world who is applying to scholarships so please keep that in mind and you know be very you know also your guidance counselors if you remember when i said be familiar with them you can also email them to send you some scholarships. Also apply to their scholarships that your school might have. My school used Naviance. If your school used Naviance, utilize that because Naviance is going to help you a lot throughout your senior year for applying to scholarships because they post scholarships on that. Let's say you can get scholarships is if you apply to state scholarships for your state. For example, if you go to Delaware or Maryland, search for your state government scholarships your delegate and senatorial scholarships um those are much easier to win i don't know if your state has them but my state does i'm gonna be going like back and forth i just want um you guys to get everything because i put it in a list but i just want to give my advice to people because i know that right now 
you you guys might be stressed out applying to schools, especially now that it's COVID-19. You might not be able to do as much as you could at school, you know, utilize uh, the library and stuff. But if you are in school, please util utilize your library. Get books to study for your SAT. I use the SAT Prep College Board book for my SAT and the Princeton Review. You can also use websites like Khan Academy and Prep Scholars. I think you have to pay for that though. I think it's like $400. But Khan Academy is still good, but I didn't use websites. I used uh, the College Board books. So those are good too. Utilize your libraries. And also, I would say for scholarships, again, to prepare a portfolio of, you know, you can keep uh, your transcripts in there. For transcripts, go to your um, office and ask for your transcripts. Some schools charge for transcripts and stuff, or just ask your counselor for your transcripts, put that in your portfolio, like just get a bunch of those because those most uh, scholarships ask you to mail in like a lot of stuff. So usually you might need like a transcript, a report card, uh, the essay. Uh, I can't really remember everything that my scholarships ask me, but those are just some things you can do to prepare yourself and have like a stress-free, you know, senior year. If you already did well your junior year on your SAT and SAT score, you don't have to worry. But your senior year, you should be trying to get a better score based on your target reach and top schools. I can't stress this enough. Please retake your SAT and ACT scores. You don't know if there's a scholarship that you could have gotten. Uh, if you are, when applying to schools, I use Common App and Coalition because it's just faster than going through the whole website. And some schools only allow you to apply to Common App or through Coalition or whatever. For Common App, you can only apply to at least 20 schools and you can't create a second account to apply to more schools. You can only apply to 20 schools on Common App. So please choose those 20 schools wisely. When you're choosing schools, think about uh, using your target reach and top schools, think about that for applying. Be very careful not to apply to like schools that you know that you're never gonna go to even if you get in, like far away schools or private schools. Private schools are more expensive than public schools. If you're wasting the amount that you can apply to on Common App, you cannot exit them out after applying to them and then put other ones on the list. So please, you know, pay attention to that. Apply to schools that are that are in um, of your you know financial aid range and you know use all these key factors into applying you know location um, uh, tuition room and board you know and the scholarships that they give you for applying to school um, to schools you know uh, sometimes they do well yeah some schools they make you pay for uh, applying for the application fee. Not everyone has to pay for their application or pay to send your SAT and ACT scores to the school. Please talk with your counselor and ask them if there are possible fee waivers for you based on your, you know, your FAFSA and financial aid because not everyone has to pay for applying for schools and uh, sending in scores. So please, please, please ask your counselor. Your recommendations because um, Apple school applications always ask you for that that's another thing you should keep in your portfolio for your scholarships are recommendations most schools ask you for at least two to three recommenders so you should at least ask two of your teachers for recommendations please start early on asking your teachers for recommendations because you're not the only one in your school that needs a recommendation you should ask your teacher and stay ahead of them so you should keep checking and emailing your teacher and reminding them to give you your recommendation letter because they have other students they have to worry about that are seniors too and it's not just you. So you should always start asking for recommendations on time. During your like your November to like January, you should be applying to like schools using that time. So apply to schools. Um, this You should use that time to be applying to schools. You don't really have to be stressed out about applying to schools because you should already know what you want based on your target reach and top school from this year and junior year. And just reuse the same essay. It's not that big of a deal. Just reuse the same essay. Do the essay questions. Don't stress too much about doing a 700 word essay. 
like you don't really have to stress too much honestly my advice is that you don't really have to be stressed out about applying to schools unless you're applying to like an ivy or a very very competitive school if it's an ivy then yes you need to properly you know get those stats that that ivy school requires or you know uh the essay do get the uh, critiques on your essay for ivy schools but if it's just a regular um you know more, less competitive school or a competitive school that's not an ivy like for example ohio state university um i would just say that like as long as you have good stats you have an equal chance of getting into that competitive school not an ivy but schools like ohio state or boston university schools like that that are competitive but are not but are not ivies you have a good chance of getting into them if you have good stats so your essay and and you know clubs and uh ap test scores and stuff like that are okay but your stats are gonna overrule them so you'll be fine so you don't really need to stress out that's what i'm saying after doing your top reach and target schools if you already know after looking at your sat and act scores that those scores are not the ones that that school might accept please do not stress yourself out by applying to a school that your stats are lower than because you will just stress yourself out if it's already you know the time for applying in senior year and you have stats that are not for that specific school please use your your um target school list and apply to schools that are in your your reach your own like your reach so you don't stress yourself out trying to apply to an ivy uh, ivy league when you have a 700 on the sat for example um another thing i would say is apply to at least 10 schools based on your target reach and target school list because you could apply to two schools and you might not get into the two of them but if it but if it is a um a target school on your list and you know you have the stats for it don't you know but at least still apply to 10 schools so you have a, like you know a variety that you can choose from that's what i would say because it's uh it's just better to you know and also you can tell people if you got into that school i got into that school you know it's just, you know, it's just better to apply to more schools, not just one, unless you are, like, determined that you are going to go to a community college or you only want to apply to community. But even then, you should still try to apply to more than just one school. Yeah, about, um, for testing, I was very stressed out about my, uh, testing for, uh, SAT and ACT. But what I would say is that just get the, the books from your library. They are free because you are borrowing the book. And just do the practice, te practice test on a, like a separate journal and just keep practicing them. Um, you can even practice during your junior year so that it's not as stressful your senior year. But please remember, if you are not trying to get into an Ivy League school, you do not need to be stressed out about your SAT and ACT score. Just do your best and try to keep retaking the test because you become more and more familiar with it. So please do not be stressed out about your SAT and ACT scores, especially if you're trying to go to an HBCU or you know a less competitive school. You do not need to be stressed about your SAT and ACT scores because nine times out of 10, those schools usually do take um, SAT scores that are a little bit below average. So you are fine in that department. Um, another thing is that whenever you take the AP courses and stuff, they do prepare you for your SAT and ACT scores, uh, like tests. So that's something to keep in mind. But I really, I just want everyone to know that you do not have to be stressed out your senior year. Even though now we're in the pandemic, if you are at school and you are watching this, like if you're not doing school online and you are in person for school, please enjoy your senior year. Do not be stressed out. Enjoy these last few months of your senior year. Do not be stressed out about, you know, SAT and ACT scores. Please do not be stressed out. If you are watching this in the future, when, you know, you know, 2021, 2022, 2023, and not just 2020, uh, I hope that your senior and junior year is a stress-free senior and junior year. If you're a ninth grader or a 10th grader watching this too, prepare yourself for junior and senior year enjoy yourself as a ninth and tenth grade year but at least try and do you know get a good gpa if you don't that is fine but please do try that and i cannot stress this enough once again you do not have to be stressed out everything is going to be okay 
I hope that this video comforted you guys and also gave you like tips that you can do so that you don't have to be stressed and I really hope this video helped you with your senior and junior year I know it was all over the place but it's like so many points I want to get out because my a couple of months ago you know when I was senior I did not have anyone to like tell me the like uh you know on YouTube that was telling me stuff about you know I was just seeing a bunch of people telling me oh they got a uh, 1300 or 1400 and that's why they got into this school so I was thinking I had to have all this stuff just to get in there but I'm telling you based if you research the stats of your schools and be realistic of what you what schools you can go to with your stats then you should be fine don't stress yourself out trying to go to an Ivy League school some some Ivy Leagues you know they it's uh it's they're prestigious and you know it's the aesthetic of it but sometimes they're not as fun as public schools other public schools that are not private you know um you know public schools are just standard or less competitive schools some less competitive schools and public schools are very very fun more fun than ivies you know and there are some very good schools that are not ivy leagues that if you apply to jobs after graduating or whatever they still hold a good name to them that you can you know at least try and strive to you know trying to go to that school so you don't always have to do Ivy Leagues. It's really, it's really not that um, deep. I was just there a couple months ago in the same position as you, and I would at now looking back on it, it's like I shouldn't have been as stressed as I was, because at the end of the day, no one, like at the end of the day, it really doesn't like matter. Just always strive for a school that gives you the most money and a school that you won't have to you know uh you know that fits within your uh your bargain you know always go for school to give you the most money the most scholarships and stuff at the end of the day everyone all graduated from college everyone went to school you all went to school at the end it doesn't matter if you went to harvard yale yale um harvard yale dartmouth or brown or whatever it doesn't matter at the end of the day because we all went to school and we all got our education we all got our certificate we all got our degree so it doesn't really matter at the end of the day always strive for the school that gives you the most scholarships and you won't have to like really wor worry about anything but if you do have the stats for an ivy league school don't let me stop you apply to it but if you are not close to the stats or you are stressing yourself out to get there it really doesn't matter Pick any school that you like that is in your range for your stats and you should be good because at the end of the day, we will all have our graduate diploma. We will all have our diploma. We will all be graduates of college at the end of the day. I hope everyone enjoyed this video and please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you need help with college and like a more in-depth like answers to your questions, please don't hesitate to uh, contact me down below in the comment section because I will be replying to your questions.